Intel's made an exciting announcement where they're putting their chips into some place where they haven't done before. And here to talk about is Tom Steeman. How you doing? I'm doing great. It's good to be here. So this is Intel. We think of Intel and we think of them be providing the chips that provide big things like computers and servers and stuff like that. Here they are switching gears a little bit and going into a, an area where we may not associate Intel with. Yes. Why don't you explain? Yeah, we made an announcement today about, um, in collaboration with Nissan, on bringing our technology into their vehicles. And are you bringing new technology into the vehicles? Are these, uh, you know, processors or some sort of cloud technology that has not yet been developed by Intel, or is this based on existing technologies? It's existing microprocessors mm -hmm. and, and uh, system-on-chip devices, but what is really different is that we are bringing connectivity and new levels of experiences into the vehicle. What type of experience? What, what in, a, in one of these cars, what would the driver or passenger experience differently than they are right now? Yeah, one of the research projects that we have done with Nissan, as an example, is um, having remote access to your vehicle. For instance, um, it gets hit in the parking lot, for example, and then a signal gets sent to your smartphone, and you could even, through the cameras that exist in the vehicle, you can see some footage of what's happening. You can potentially remotely unlock the vehicle if you forgot your key and, and features like that. Is this with certain Nissan models or a, a, a one specific model? No, the announcement that we did today with Nissan is that 2013 going forward, they will integrate Intel platform technologies into a select number of their vehicles. Mm -hmm. Starting when? 2013. 2013. 2013. It's next year. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Now, this, there, there, this is an area of focus for, for Intel, embedding more of their chips, but there, there's a little bit of a challenge there, because as I said earlier, Intel provides a lot of the chips for bigger devices. The chips that, that go into cars and other embedded devices tend to be of a smaller nature, mm -hmm. where Intel really hasn't played much. How, how is the company transitioning into that area? Yeah, what we really take advantage uh, of is all of the technology that we have developed for smartphones and tablets. You saw a lot of announcements at CES earlier yeah. this year about an Intel-based smartphone. These are very low-power devices, very small spaces, and which is very synonymous what's going on in the vehicle as well. So that type of technology immediately can find a great place in vehicles. Mm -hmm. What does this mean for car costs overall? We're seeing a lot about this connected vehicle over the past mm -hmm. few years. Um, yeah. And a lot of this means it's, it's pre-market technology now instead of just buying some aftermarket gadgets and sticking them in your dashboard and saying, well, great, now I can listen to my mm -hmm. iPhone or iPod. And this is all being sort of baked into the vehicle, right? right. So what does this mean for, for car prices and, and car technology going forward? Well, clearly consumers, um, you know, they constantly want to be connected. It's almost a demand that they have. And they really need to extend their digital lifestyle from their home into their vehicle. And most uh, most um, consumers in the United States, on average, if you add it all up, spend about two months of their um, waking hours into a vehicle every year. That's an enormous amount of time. And they really like to extend that digital lifestyle and connected lifestyle into the vehicle. And so that becomes a very important feature for the car manufacturers to bring that level of technology into cars. And in the collaboration with Nissan, we are really focused on bringing that level of connectivity and these rich experiences to cars. Will we see other car makers join in this? I mean, today you announced it with, with Nissan. Who, who else are you working with and, and uh, partnering with? Yeah, we have done prior announcements with BMW, with Mercedes um, for their line of vehicles. Hey, Intel has a $100 million VC fund. Is this part of that, that, that VC fund? That, I believe that VC fund is, is specific to auto technology. Yeah, absolutely. We announced it a few weeks ago. Uh, we believe that um, we want to stimulate and enable a very rich ecosystem of developers that will come up with innovative new applications that can be used in vehicles. And the uh, Intel Capital Investment Fund is really targeted at driving innovation at that level. Ton, what do you see as the real future of the car. Let's look five, ten years down the road here when everybody's connected, everyone's mm -hmm. using their smartphone in some capacity, hands-free, you know, in the car. Um, voice activation is the standard. People can tweet from their cars, whatever it mm -hmm. may be now, right? Yeah. Going forward, what, what do you see as the real future of, of yeah, the you'll, vehicle? You'll see some new things, uh, new user machine interfaces, gesture control, better speech recognition. But what is also important about the connected car will enable is much more efficient transportation from point A to point B through an intelligent transportation system. When all these vehicles truly become cloud connected and can communicate their data, their position, what the traffic conditions are to other vehicles, it will significantly improve the efficiency for everybody.